Something people ask a lot about specifically is how to use cooldowns as a tank. How should they use their skills together? What shouldn't they use together? So let's talk about this finally, and maybe shed some light on the subject. In the meantime, please rate, comment, subscribe, follow me on socials, check my Twitch streams, and maybe support me on Patreon. Let's get right into the topic at hand. And a quick note, this video takes place in Endwalker. If any skills changed or were removed, and it no longer works this way, focus on the lesson I am using that skill to teach, rather than the fact that specific skill doesn't work for the lesson. For those newer, let's establish the base concept. Cooldowns when talking about tanks tends to specifically mean defensive cooldowns, abilities with long cooldown timers that augment your defense in some way, as opposed to cooldowns that increase your offensive powers. This is also referred to as mitigation. You are mitigating damage with cooldowns. Despite cooldowns being able to mean offensive skills and mitigation is purely defensive, they often are used interchangeably. I will be doing so within this video too. This might be confusing at first, but the sooner you get used to it, the better. Cooldowns can have a number of different ways of helping you. An effect on the enemy, buffing your stats, or just outright reducing damage. What matters is they're increasing your survival, and you want to be using them often and effectively. Used early and often. But there is such a thing as too early. You want to be mitigating damage before you take it, but you also don't want to be wasting the time on the timer. If anything, timing is probably the most complex thing about mitigations. It even differs between trash mobs and bosses. In trash, you want to be using cooldowns just after you start taking damage, but before you take a lot of it. That is, unless you're pulling large groups as most tanks tend to end up doing. You want to be using your cooldowns once you stop running and grabbing more enemies. You hit the button when you've gathered all the enemies, but hopefully right before all of them hit you at the exact same time. It's a small, specific window, but you want to be aiming for this window, then making sure you always have something running until the herd thins out. Correct spacing of cooldowns is the other difficult part of mitigating. When pulling large groups, you're trying to juggle doing DPS, moving out of avoidable AoEs, and then still needing to watch your timers to make sure you're not sitting around without any defensive buffs running. Often in both trash and bosses, you're also trying to pair cooldowns and not just using one, unless it's a specifically very strong cooldown. Several cooldowns are on the weaker end and will work better together than alone. I think when it comes to pairing cooldowns, people are often overthinking things, that they're missing some singular optimal cooldown usage or such, and that all other options are outright bad. But there's many possible pairings of cooldowns that work, and basically every pairing is valid in some way. That even includes your 30% mitigation with another. This also includes arm's length. This works as a defensive cooldown on trash mobs. While it only lasts a few seconds, the slow effect is much longer once applied and is damage reduction. Slow is an attack speed buff, not movement speed. It's harder to quantify than a flat reduction though. It might be less effective in pools with magic enemies thrown in or such, and better in others due to lengthy cast locks for enemies. DPS can also make use of this. If for whatever reason the tank dies, hit arm's length and you might survive longer. The worry with stacking cooldowns is not wanting to use everything at once. You'll have maybe 20 seconds of being near invincible and then a minute of being a wet piece of paper. Stacking this much also makes each additional mitigation weaker. To properly show this, we need to use math. Here we have Warrior. Vengeance is a 30% mitigation. Rampart is a 20% mitigation. Together, that should reduce 50% of all damage that comes to you, right? Wrong. It actually will reduce 44% of all damage. The same reason you want to use all offensive buffs at the same time in openers, we want to avoid doing it for defensive buffs. Cooldowns are multiplicative. Let's say you have 10,000 HP and take a hit of 10,000 damage. Apply Vengeance and reduce this by 30%. That will reduce the attack to 7,000 damage. Now apply Rampart. Reducing 7,000 by 20% will bring it down to 5,600. Now that's 20% of 7,000, but not 10,000. It reduced damage by 1,400. That is only 14% of that original value of 10,000. Effectively, Rampart was only a 14% mitigation, and stacking more makes each additional cooldown even less powerful. This is diminishing returns. At least, if it directly affects damage values. Let's take Thrill of Battle. 
That increases your HP by 20% for the duration. So with 10,000 HP, it is essentially a 2,000 damage mitigation on any one singular attack. But regardless of how many other cooldowns you use, you're reducing damage by 2,000. No matter what, it is a reduction of 20% of your max HP. At that point, the worry becomes not needing that extra HP. And also the fact that Thrill of Battle also increases healing you receive. Healing you for the duration becomes far easier. But what this all really boils down to is that point about all options being valid in some way. There's a ton of factors that you should be accounting for. There is no one right answer, because there is no one singular dungeon, trial, or raid. Every duty will have different specifics you want to worry about if you want to use things to their maximum effect. How strong or weak is your party? How strong or weak is the enemy pack you're fighting? Is there another one right after this, or is that group not worth mentioning? If your party is weak, you want to stack cooldowns even less, because the fight will be longer. Stacking cooldowns makes healing you easier for the duration, but if the fight takes a whole minute before enemies start dying, you need to space out cooldowns to last that long, or become paper and just die. Offload some of the burden onto your healer, since they have their own set of healing and defensive cooldowns too. If you burn everything too quickly, the burden becomes the healer's alone anyway, so spread out the burden by spreading your cooldowns. If your party is strong, the opposite is true. If you plan to use three cooldowns for this specific pull on an average run, you will use them all much closer together and overlapping instead of spaced out. You don't need to spread out your cooldowns because the enemies will die before you need a second round of them. And if it's the last group of enemies before a long walk to the next boss, no sense holding on to stuff. As long as you are taking into account the diminishing returns of stacking cooldowns, most every use of your cooldowns is valid. The issue isn't the complexity of what cooldowns to pair together, it's what your party is like. Smart cooldown usage is a good skill to learn, but the part people are missing is that it's not the cooldowns that are the real issue. But that's what we're here to discuss, and learning when a party is doing well is mostly something you just have to get a feel for. So let's move on to more exceptions to the rules. Sticking with Warrior, Warrior has raw intuition starting at level 56. And as everyone knows at this point in Endwalker, raw intuition is... When it comes to trash pools, Warrior shouldn't use basically any cooldowns before raw intuition until after raw intuition has been used. Get to like 50% health, pop it, then instantly heal back to maximum. Then maybe pop Vengeance for the healer to actually take over healing. At least until Raw Intuition comes off cooldown in 25 seconds and you use it again. Looking at Dark Knight, we have the Blackest Knight. You basically want to use this off cooldown every 15 seconds, regardless of what other cooldowns you have running. The difficulty with it has always been not accidentally spending all your MP and not being able to use it to begin with. 25% of your HP is a flat 25% of whatever your HP is, and the cooldown is so short. Paladin and Gunbreaker also have these short, super spammable cooldowns, but these you actually want to take into account as normal cooldowns. The effects aren't so completely specific that you put all your focus on it. When we talk about trials and raids though, things obviously start getting different. As said, we want to be using cooldowns before we take damage. But the damage we're mostly worried about in this content is tank busters. Typically these have a cast bar and do very heavy damage even to you as a tank. You might need three or even more cooldowns to survive in Savage Raids. Once again, what cooldowns are good here and what you should be pairing here depends massively, but this time based entirely on the fight itself. Pacing of a fight really changes how cooldowns work. If the boss only uses tank busters at a very rare and slow pace, you can dump most everything for the buster and use the rest for reducing auto attack damage. In Savage, auto attacks are their own hell. Otherwise, some fights have extremely common tank busters. Cooldown planning can be pretty tight, but it will be unique to this fight and this fight alone. Another fight with common tank busters might only spam the busters in a specific point in the fight, with the rest of the fight being normally paced. What cooldowns do you use in Savage? you have to learn fight to fight, but otherwise you're definitely using your short, spammable cooldown for every buster along with some of the stronger stuff. But depending on the fight, you have to ration those stronger things across every buster. It's good to come in with a basic plan of cooldowns you will use before going into any new duty. Plan to use this on pool 1, this on pool 2, or this for tank buster 1 and buster 2. 
but you need to also expect to have to scrap the plan and do everything different from now on. A basic cooldown rotation is commendable, but more often than not will need to be entirely adjusted because the plan doesn't fit. But of course, there's also the one cooldown we've not mentioned. Your ultimate cooldown. Super Belied, Home Gang, Hollowed Ground, and Living Dead. These are something you use in emergencies and emergencies only, is what you say if you don't know how to tank. You should be using these. In Savage Raids especially, these get used all the time for either completely cheesing some mechanics or dedicated for tank busters. A tank buster stack barker? Solo take it with the ultimate. Stupidly strong buster that requires you to use four or five cooldowns? Ultimate. The power of these skills cannot be understated. That includes in dungeon runs. Plan your cooldown usage around your ultimates, not just your normal cooldowns. While Paladin is kinda screwed with having a 7 minute cooldown, most dungeon runs can fit in even two uses of Hollowed. That's two spots of 10 seconds where you do not take any damage. Or let's go back to Warrior. Remember how Raw Intuition- We'll start with Home Gang. Instead of hitting Raw Intuition, let your HP drop low, hit Home Gang, then when Home Gang has 3 or 4 seconds left, pop Raw Intuition and- and when you do this multiple times in a dungeon run, you can even make enemies die faster. The healer doesn't need to heal you at first, meaning they can do extra damage for free. Or they're a white mage and will spam holy afterwards for another 6 seconds of not taking any damage. The only thing is that you should be telling your healer your plan ahead of time. Don't just run in with your plan without telling them. They're gonna assume you're an idiot who isn't using cooldowns otherwise. Make a macro of some kind, or stop moving to type out your plan quick. Give them a heads up, then get to being invincible. Though there is no guarantee that they actually listen to your plan and just spam heals anyway. My motto has been for a long time that you should prevent emergencies before they happen. Saving tools until it's already too late is not going to help. And then if emergencies never happen to begin with, you just wasted a tool by never touching it. Once you start using all your tools instead of just most of them, you'll see a huge improvement in your ability to pair things in more ways. Just remember, don't do this. Unless it's an ultimate raid. Then you probably have to do something like this at some point. Thanks for watching this little video on how to use cooldowns as a tank. Please do the rate and sub and all that, and feel free to suggest further topics to discuss. This is one that was commonly asked for that I didn't feel was needed, but well, here we are. I hope it did shed some light on why I didn't really think it was needed. It's both simpler, and more complex than people tend to think. Take care and made the power of Anadid Hogs they waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon. Thanks especially to my big dragons who are Altrios, Eamon Al Khatib, Benjamin Han, Benjamin Rice, Fergie, Ethan W, Fraser97, Jeremy Abbott, Jericho, Mizella, Shana, Shimmering Blaze, T Rogue, Timmy, and Zero Two. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time for a review.